we're going to work on a project in Photo Paint, which is an absolutely brilliant photographic editing program. You can even create brochures from scratch within Photo Paint. Let's click the Quick Start tab, choose Open, and I'm going to navigate to my Pictures folder and open this image here. Double click on the title bar and then F4 on the keyboard for a maximum zoom. One more thing, up to Image and down to Rotate, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees just so that we have a slightly larger working area, F4, maximum zoom. Let's assume we've been to Saul, this is our photograph and we want to create a great memory. Well first of all, I want to remove this blurred area in the corner of the image. So I'm going to come over here and select the Clone tool from the Touch Up Tools. The Clone tool uh, reacts very, very differently depending on the settings on your property bar. So some safe settings would be to have 50 on the transparency, 50 on feather, and of course 300 adjust the size of the nib. Now when you right click your mouse, you create what we call an anchor point. That sample nib there is the area we're going to sample colour from and then using this nib paint that colour back on. So as I click and drag, notice the nib moves with me, this is the anchor point, and what I'm doing is I'm just holding down my mouse button and I'm painting that anchor point or that sampled area of colour onto my new area. How good does that look? Just get that little bit right there. Well that's great. Now I want to mask the area of the sky. So over to my mask tools and I'm going to select the magic wand mask tool. Whenever using mask tools, particularly the magic wand, it's usually good to be in additive mode if you're going to need to click more than once. That means your next mask will add to your previous mask. And I'm going to set a torrents here of say 12, click over here in the corner, and in fact, because the colour of the blue sky is so similar, it actually masked all of that automatically really well for us. Now what I'm going to do is invert this mask. In other words, everything that is not masked now will become masked. So we're going to use the invert button, click, and see how the mask is now around the building. I'm going to actually cut the building away from the background. So I'm going to come up to Object, Create, and Object Cut Selection. What that will do in the Object Manager is create a brand new object there. In fact, in the Object Manager we can now move this new little slide bar which increases the size of our thumbnails. Let's go to Maximum to help us see here. Also we have a little button called Extense Mode. If I click that little button, what you'll notice is that I'm now only seeing the the object size itself versus with it turned off I'm seeing the object within the image area size which is quite handy as well. We want to now do some colouring of our image so first of all I'm going to select the background which is now only the sky and come up to adjust and come to the image adjustment lab. Here in the image adjustment lab we can take this grey looking sky and make it a lot bluer going to set the temperature way over in the blue section, way up high around the 8000 mark, and move my tinting toward the bluer tint area, and I'm going to increase saturation, or the imposing of those settings into the image. Finally, lower the contrast just a little, and then it will really richen up the depth of the blue in the sky. Click OK, and wait till you see that difference. Doesn't the sky look great? Similarly, let's adjust the colour settings or the look of the actual building. So up to Adjust and Image Adjustment Lab. Okay, first of all, I think the temperature and tint are probably in the correct area. So I'm just going to increase saturation by 20. A similar figure for contrast, around 20. And then I'm just going to adjust the mid-tones up until around 14, 15. Now if I create a snapshot of that to go down the bottom there, reset my original, click on that, you can see the difference between the two images. And that one's a lot more dramatic in colour, isn't it? So let's go with that, click OK, and what a difference we're now creating in our image, a lot more colour, depth and energy, etc. 
If we had tried to edit this image as one image, we wouldn't have achieved such great color options because separating the blue sky from the building allowed us to deal with each one separately. Well, now we're going to add some text. So I'm going to click my text tool and I'm going to up the size to around about 300 points and I'm going to click and type the word Saul. S-E-O-U-L. Now, with that highlighted, I'm going to make sure it's white in color, so I'll click white. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. I'm going to just move this image over here like this, pop it up there. I'm going to resize, pull on the corner handle, right up to the width of the image. See that little circle there, or the looks like a non-smoking symbol? Right click when you see that and click apply. So when you resize text or images, you have to apply the change. What we're going to do now is change the order of our objects here. Watch this. If I take my building image, click and drag and pop it on the top layer, as you can see it's now covering a part of my text and that's a really cool looking effect. But again I'm going to select my text and then I'm going to come down to my transparency tool which is down here, select object transparency, go with a flat transparency and let's say we set this to around 85 now that's a little bit too transparent. I think we'll come back to say, I'll type in 70. And that looks quite good, doesn't it? Well, we're going to do one more thing and import another image. So I'm going to come up here and click Import. And I'm going to import this image here. Now if you want to get this from your DVD, it would be under Objects, Animal Kingdom and birds and that number is correct there. Now I've just put it in my picture file uh, folder for convenience. So I'll double click. Now this image has a transparent background which is depicted by all of those squares there. So I'm just going to click on there and grab my image and pull it over here. And I'm just going to stretch it up in size a little as you can see. Now Photo Paint has some very interesting handles, a little different to Corel Draw your standard sizing handles that you can see there. But if you click again, yes, rotation, and I think I will rotate that around just a little like that. Now remember, we've got our picture sideways at the moment. If you click again, you can actually create some very, very interesting effects. We have the ability to create perspective or distortion. Click again, and this is actually the perspective handle. The previous one was distortion. And we can do all sorts of things. Click again to go back to those normal handles. So always have a bit of a play because there are a few things you can do. Now again, I'll pop that over there and click again for my sizing handles. Pull it up to size. Pop on there like that. Now right click and apply my changes. And finally, I just want to show you two more things. If I select that image, and I select the actual uh, soul, for example, or object background, finger on shift, right click, I can actually group these two together. And a nice new little feature is that little arrow there. If you click, notice how you can see what's inside of a group of objects. Isn't that cool? Just wanted to show you that one. Now, finally, image, and we will come back to rotate, back the right way, and there's our final image. Hope you've enjoyed this. Why don't you have a go yourself?